Assalamu alaikum. The exchange of letters that took place between Muslim SM Ajmal 62 and atheist Arun Ra is important for both Muslims and atheists because it includes discussions of both Islam and science. The letters were unclear to read and understand when they were uploaded from the channel of SM Ajmal 62. So to present them more clearly, I took the task of producing these videos and will inshallah include some of my own comments too as there were some points that were left unanswered. The first letter sent to Arun Ra was from a website of scienceagainstevolution.org which discussed about a book Decoding the Universe written by Charles Seif. It elaborates how Charles Seif an evolutionist himself is puzzled after understanding about information theory. Umar reads that letter in his clear voice, mashallah. Information, thermodynamics and entropy. Studies about information and thermodynamics both include the concept of entropy, which is the enemy of evolution. The fields of thermodynamics and information theory both present strong challenges to the theory of evolution. Unfortunately, these are complex subjects that are not easily understood. That's why we are glad that evolutionist Charles Seif has done such a good job of explaining the basic concepts in the introduction and first four chapters of his new book, Decoding the Universe. The last five chapters deal with quantum physics and other subjects not relevant to the theory of evolution. But the first 118 pages of the book contain some of the best, most accurate, and easiest to understand explanations of thermodynamics and information theory. Since he's an evolutionist, he doesn't draw the obvious conclusions and tries to skate around them as well as he can. But he does a pretty good job of setting the stage for those conclusions. Information is physical. In the introduction, he begins by saying, Information is not just an abstract concept, and it is not just facts or figures, dates or names. It is a concrete property of matter and energy that is quantifiable and measurable. It is every bit as real as the weight of a chunk of lead or the energy stored in an atomic warhead. And just like mass and energy, information is subject to a set of physical laws that dictate how it can behave, how information can be manipulated, transferred, duplicated, erased, or destroyed. And everything in the universe must obey the laws of information because everything in the universe is shaped by the information it contains. He's really nailed it. We might nitpick and say that information isn't a property of matter and energy, but is a property like matter and energy. Nevertheless, we agree in principle. One can always dispute the best way to express a concept. The choice of of or like is not that important. It is important, on the other hand, that in the list of things that can be done to information, it can be manipulated, transferred, duplicated, erased, or destroyed. The obvious word that is missing is created. Information may be discovered, but it can't be created. Since it exists now and can't be created now, it must have existed since the beginning, whenever and whatever that beginning was. The laws of information are beginning to reveal the answers to some of the most profound questions of science. But the answers are in some ways more disturbing and bizarre than the paradoxes they solve. Information theory and the laws of thermodynamics both lead to a picture of a universe speeding towards its own demise, not one evolving from chaos to order. Heat and information both flow. Information is useless unless it moves from place to place. The information in a DNA molecule is of no value if it isn't read by some biological process that knows what to do with the information. Information is of use only when it flows from the information source to the information destination. It is information flow that gets the job done. Everything that happens is the result of information flow. And everything that happens causes information to flow. The same thing is true of heat. Energy can be thought of in terms of heat. And useful work only gets done when heat flows from one place to another. 
So there is an analogy between information flow and heat flow. Information theory, the science of the manipulation and transmission of bits, is very closely tied to thermodynamics, the science of the manipulation and transfer of energy and entropy. Information and heat dissipate. People have long known that it is hard to keep hot and cold separated. Hot things cool down and cold things naturally warm up. That's why the ice melts in your refrigerator if the power goes out. Entropy is a measure of how evenly distributed heat is. As the ice melts in your refrigerator, the entropy of the refrigerator and the air in your kitchen surrounding it increases. The same thing is true of information. Once you stop applying energy, though, that stored information leaks out into the environment. For nature, it seems, attempts to dissipate information, just as nature attempts to increase entropy. The two ideas are exactly the same. The laws of information had already solved the paradoxes of thermodynamics. In fact, information theory consumed thermodynamics. The problems in thermodynamics can be solved by recognizing that thermodynamics is, in truth, a special case of information theory. Now we see that information is physical. By studying the laws of information, we can figure out the laws of the universe. And just as all matter and energy is subject to the laws of thermodynamics, all matter and energy is subject to the laws of information, including us. Though living beings seem as if they are inherently different from computers and boxes of gas, the laws of information theory still apply. We human beings store information in our brains and our genes, just as computers store information in their hard drives. And in fact, it seems that the act of living can be seen as the act of replicating and preserving information despite nature's attempts to dissipate and destroy it. Information theory is revealing the answer to the age-old question, what is life? The answer is quite disturbing. Life is not death. What is life? The key argument emerges from the biochemical understanding of what life and death are, which is that in living matter, all of the hundreds of linked chemical reactions must be in states of non-equilibria. Death occurs when the biochemical reactions of the cell reach their end point, equilibria. Looking at it from a physicist's perspective, a living organism is continuously fighting off decay. It maintains its internal order despite a universe that is increasing entropy. By eating food, by consuming energy that ultimately comes from the sun, the organism is able to keep itself far from equilibrium, from death. This is not the way nature usually behaves. Entropy naturally increases in a system that is left to its own devices. A box of gas quickly settles into equilibrium. Information tends to dissipate. Stored information eventually diffuses throughout the universe. Information spreads out, especially in big, complex, warm systems like living creatures. And once a creature dies, it immediately begins to decay. Its flesh falls apart, and so do the molecules that make up that flesh. With them, the creature's genetic code is, over time, scattered to the winds. Somehow, being alive allows living beings to preserve their information, seemingly flouting entropy for a short time. Once a creature dies, though, that ability is lost forever, and entropy wins as the creature's information is scattered. We can say that something alive is something that is not dead, but then we have the problem of defining what dead means. One rather disrespectful way of describing a dead person is to say that he has assumed room temperature. Disrespectful as it is, it is nevertheless true. The second law of thermodynamics says that heat will distribute itself as evenly as it can. Therefore, the corpse will assume room temperature. Living bodies don't. Information collects in libraries because people spend energy to gather that information from all over and consciously transport it to the library. When uncontrolled energy was added to the library at Alexandria in the form of heat, it did not increase the information contained in it, 
When the library at Alexandria burned down, the information in all those books dissipated into the ashes and was lost. There is information in a DNA molecule. How did it collect there? The scientific laws of thermodynamics and information theory tell us that information doesn't just collect naturally. It dissipates naturally. Genetic mutations cause information to be lost, which generally results in disease or death. Living things get information passed down from their parents through DNA. The parents got that information from the grandparents. You can keep going back generation after generation, but eventually you run out of parents. Where did the first living things get their information? Evolutionists have to believe, despite all scientific evidence to the contrary, that somehow information naturally collected in a cell, and that information caused the cell to use energy in metabolic and reproductive processes. And then somehow information for making cardiovascular systems just accidentally appeared. Random, unguided processes somehow produced a brain, complete with nerves capable of sensing the environment, and algorithms capable of reacting favorably to that environment. The information for building many different kinds of eyes just happened to flow into the DNA molecule. Natural laws, the laws of information theory and thermodynamics, tell us that energy and information naturally tend to dissipate. We see that this is exactly what happens when something dies. For life to arise naturally, these laws would have to run in reverse. It is difficult, in fact it is impossible, for a scientist to reconcile the theory of evolution with the laws of thermodynamics and information theory. Remember, the act of living can be seen as the act of replicating and preserving information despite nature's attempts to dissipate and destroy it. Information theory is revealing the answer to the age-old question. What is life? That answer is quite disturbing. It is only disturbing if one wants to continue to believe in evolution, in spite of all the evidence against it. The only logical answer is that all the information required for life had to be present at the very beginning. It could not have collected gradually over time. Arunda replied with a short letter, referring mainly to different websites. As the second letter of SM Majumla 62, included Arunra's first letter too. I have not included Arunra's letter separately to prevent duplication. Original letter of Arunra can be read in the background too. YouTuber Faro0485 has mashallah read Arunra's letter very efficiently. SMH62 has read his own letter. Arunra Correspondence Part 1 Thanks for the reply. Hereby I will copy paste your letter piece by piece in commas and then will reply below the word unquote. You said having an adequate understanding of both thermodynamics and evolution I know that one poses no challenge to the other. Having an adequate understanding of both Thermodynamics and evolution, I know that one possesses no challenge to the other. What's more, I can prove it. Unquote. When we theist mention evolution, we actually mean emergence of living beings in current form, starting from simple naturally available material on earth with slow transformation. So please do not try to tell me in any of your letter that evolution and abiogenesis are two different things for which I need to educate myself of. What we theist mean with that is that the cell itself cannot arise and so cannot evolve into a multicellular organism which then undergo further evolution. The process cannot start thermodynamically to form one single cell. As in formation theory states that all the components of cells are information molecules which cannot arise just with the supply of energy. 
There needs to be an intelligence to put the information into the cell to make it work and to continue replicating itself. Information cannot arise by simple supply of energy. I am attaching a video which describes the impossibility of spontaneous formation of proteins, DNA and RNA. I've had this discussion at least 1000 times already and I'm not interested in wasting any more time reading someone else's copy pasta. Unquote. If you have done it earlier to others, then it must be even more easy for you to copy paste what you wrote to others. I want material for which you have your own explanation. If you attach someone else material, please attach it as your own. Do not give a reference so as to redirect me. The material I attach to you should be taken by you as my own and I am stating those facts to you, this is what you should suppose. So it is me who is asking you to read the book Decoding the Universe. The following video states that for the abiogenist to happen, the amount of energy needed is equivalent to heating up of water in a but tough spontaneously up to 360 degrees centigrade, something that never happens. Please read the description of this video too. Speak for yourself. Let's see you do what no creationist has ever done. Explain how you imagine thermodynamics or entropy are supposed to pose any threat for evolution. I know you won't meet this challenge. No one ever has. The most you can do is misrepresent and misdefine each of the terms involved in your argument. Unquote. Okay, you can see me define abiogenesis and evolution as a continuum of process, the latter fully dependent on the former and if abiogenesis did not happen, there is no basis for atheism. In fact, the information theory tells us that information cannot be created without intelligence and the process of living is to continue carrying the information in a localized form. Once information dissipates, then the process is called death. Chemically speaking, life is a state of non-equilibrium of all chemical processes while death is when all reactions come in a state of equilibrium. So information and entropy are related in this way. Because the only way to buy the argument you did is if you don't understand either one. So I suggest you look up second law of thermodynamics. And evolution which is essentially an explanation of biodiversity summarized at descent with inherent genetic modification. Now explain in your own words where you imagine the problem lies. Unquote. I hope I did explain the second law of thermodynamics and information theory in my own words. As I wrote you earlier that I am talking about self-emergence of life into current form whether through abiogenesis or evolution. So the problem lies in a scientific basis of atheism. If life cannot originate, how will it evolve? Again, please read the description of the video. Peace to you. Thank you. In the first letter, SM Ajmal 62 referred to a website that described information theory. In the second letter, SM Ajmal 62 explained information theory in his own words and referred to a website and a video that described impossibility of abiogenesis under natural condition but Arunra did not discuss any of them in his next reply to. During my discussions with atheists, I have frequently observed that they try to ignore the obstacle thermodynamics and entropy posed to the process of abiogenesis and evolution. This attitude can be easily understood if we know that their strategy is to be fool people into atheism. If they will accept the obstacle, atheism will immediately have no stand scientifically. 
they frequently refer to different websites saying that there is no threat to evolution and if we think it to be so then it means we haven't understood evolution abiogenesis or entropy the correspondence between the muslim sm ajmal 62 and arun ra also had the same course arun ra replied by dismissing any threat to evolution by information theory or by entropy although the muslim tried to present it with evidence arun ra did not discuss anything about the contents of the video or the website that were disproving abiogenesis instead he posed many questions to sm ajmal 62 supposing evolution has a mountain of evidence in these series of videos i will try to expose the tricks that atheists play to be fool people into atheism and will try to reply some questions posed by arunra that were left unreplied during that correspondence allahumma salli ala muhammad ya rabbil alamin allahumma صلى الله عليه وسلم